Today we're going to take a brief look at the annotator, which is a general purpose image annotation tool that I recently open sourced. And it basically allows you to create uh, annotations on images that you can then use and feed into your neural network as training data. The repository is available on GitHub and contains use some useful information here, how to run it, how to use it, etc. It runs easiest on Docker, which is something that you can install in any operation system, and it's basically a runtime environment for Docker containers. The annotator is built for Docker, and what you're really interested in is this Docker Compose file. You can either clone or download the entire repository, or just download that particular file. I've cloned the entire repository already, you, as you can see here, and I moved into the directory. When you do so, make sure that you maintain that file name. Otherwise, you might run into trouble when running Docker Compose. Docker Compose app will usually first download the uh, Docker images when you run it for the first time. Any subsequent start, it will already have those images and uh, won't have to download them again. The images are basically a database container where I store the annotations and the actual annotator app. When I run this, it basically creates the solution, runs the Docker containers, and the application is running here. By default, it runs on port 555. You can run that on any server that you have access to, and then access it via the browser with the server name. If you run it on your local, uh, just use your localhost 555. First thing is, we create a new project. Uh, this is the first tier hierarchy. Uh, second, we have to create the features that we're interested in. For the current demo, we're looking at solar panels and uh, Let's call it bone. I don't know what it is, but uh, we have to use some label. We save those times. We can also export those settings and import them, uh, them into someone else's installation, and that allows you to use the same labels across a, t a larger team of people that annotate for the same project. For the image upload, there's two options. Um, first thing, you can just upload a single image, which is either a PNG file or JPEG file. No other formats are currently supported. And the other option is to upload a zip file. Uh, the zip file needs to contain PNG or JPEG files. Again, there's, uh, only those uh, sub, uh, formats are supported. This particular one contains 20 PNG files. Now we're all set. Uh, we have two different types of uploads here. I'm going to show you one after the other. Let's look at the satellite view first. Um, First of all, you can zoom in and out to find a correct zoom level that allows you to easily annotate the image. Uh, up here in the top, you can select the annotation type, and for this particular one, we're looking at solar panels. We have a bunch of tools available in the bottom, uh, a regular polygon tool, which basically just allows us to click at a bunch of points, and that will create a polygon that will be our annotation. Second one is a freehand tool that pretty much does what it says. And uh, the third one is a spline tool, and the spline tool, how that works is you can basically uh, select an area that you're interested in uh, to create an annotation, and in there it will create a polygon with a bunch of control points. And these control points uh, can be increased or decreased to create various different shapes that are suitable. You can play around with that, it's quite useful. Uh, you can also delete an annotation uh, or edit an annotation. When you edit one, you basically can move around control points or insert new ones. Um, every annotation tool has an option dialog in the bottom here that will give you some useful information about uh, what to do or what options you have. After you're done creating a bunch of annotations, you can save those annotations and that will persist them in the database. Next up, you can also download the actual image or you can download the annotations. When you download the annotations, it will basically download you a JSON file. The JSON file contains an array of annotations, and each annotation contains some information about uh, the control points uh, that make up the annotation, the type, and uh, a little bit of extra useful information. You can toggle the annotations, show them, hide them, if you want to see the underlying image. And then there's a bunch of other options here that uh, ch uh, change the appearance of annotations. When we look at the frame set, which is a set of images, there's another useful feature. Um, in this particular example, we have a frame player 
which will show you the next um, the previous and next number of frames. You can specify how many frames you want, say you want three frames, and uh, if you select a frame in the middle, speed it up, then you see this nice little animation that will allow you easier to follow a certain object or shape that you're interested in, and uh, you can obviously also pause that. And then we can, in here, just, uh, I'm assuming this is bound, create our annotation to follow this shape. Yeah. When you download uh, annotations for a frame set, you will basically get a JSON file with keys for each file inside the frame set and then obviously the annotation underneath. Once you're done, you can simply Control C this one here. You can press it a couple of times if you want to and kill it. Um, if you want to make sure that it's properly shut down, simply run Docker Compose down and this will ensure that all the containers are removed and the solution is properly shut down. Have fun annotating! <laughs>